Welcome, everybody, to the, I think the seventh, six or seventh, seventh, I don't know, weekly community gathering in council. And I've been getting some really beautiful feedback from people about this and how much it's appreciated. And some people have even said it's the highlight of their week. So a couple couple guidelines. If you have a question or want elaboration on anything, or you know want a topic discussed, please send that to me in a private message. I can't guarantee I'll get to them all, but I'll do my best. And please keep it to the topic of what community council is about, which is consciousness, growth, awareness, medicine work, etc. And um, that works better because there's a lot of things I don't know a lot about, but these are things I know a lot about and can usually communicate in a good way to people. So since since last week, a lot of stuff is happening. There's a big reopen movement. People want to get back to work and back into going to the malls and buying things and generally doing what is needed to make the world the way it was before this timeout happened. On the topic of you froze on my screen. Can you, am I still frozen, Henrietta? No. Okay, on the topic of, the topic should uh, be generally related to medicine work, consciousness, awareness, how to meet these times, um, things that I, I know about, not things that I don't know about, like what should I do with my stocks or bonds or should I uh, brush my teeth up and down or sideways, things like that. I don't know a lot. Well, I do know a lot about how to brush your teeth, but uh, keep, it, keep it to the topic that we generally deal with in council. Um, if it goes into politics and stuff, you may get me started on that. Hopefully you won't. Um, okay, Audrey. You may get me started on politics, but hopefully you won't because I'm quite opinionated and my opinion clashes with many people's opinions. And I want you all to be friends forever. So that's my thing about politics. Now, one of the, one of the topics that... I do want to talk about something somebody sent me as a question, and I'm going to read the question. It says, I have a question for you. I've been having an increase of dreams where I've been going mad, like insane in the dream space, rage, anger, etc. So much so that it's hard to differentiate between dream life and waking life, and it's giving me like loads of anxiety. Do you have any idea what this could mean? Because it's scaring me and I don't feel clear. Yeah, you know, I think many people are having intense dreams right now. And intense dreams because dream state is a time of incredible openness to our unconscious mind to the spirit world, to the communi communal mind, what Jung called the collective unconsciousness, or the collective unconscious mind, not unconsciousness, and to many areas of altered reality where what happens during the daytime or what might happen during the daytime can happen in the dream state. So, for example, I, I once had a realization that there was a lot of karmic stuff going on in dream state that had you experienced it in real life, it would probably kill you. So people will often have accidents or falling from heights or, you know, killing somebody or being killed, things like that. And, and perhaps one way to look at that is that's a karma that needed to be worked out in your life, in your field, that can be worked out in the dream state where you actually get to wake up in the morning unharmed. That's one idea that I had a long time ago, and it makes sense to me as well. 
the other thing is, is that we are picking up on the collective anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety and rage going on right now with people. People can't work and they want to work. People can't go to the mall and they want to go to the mall. People can't, you know, go out on a date to a restaurant and they want to go out on a date to a restaurant or a movie or the theater or something. All these things, all these usual ways that we distract ourselves from what's going on inside of us are now gone. And so the unconscious that's usually quite repressed because, you know, it's, it's like there's what we know, what we know we don't know, and what we have no friggin' clue we don't know, which is the unconscious. Unless you've been through years of psychoanalysis. So this area where we have no friggin' clue that we don't know what's going on, that's connected possibly to everybody else's collective unconscious mind, uh, is freaking out right now. It's really freaking out right now. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. The reopen movement is happening. I went walking in the park. I can say it now. I went walking in the park legally for the first time since the park was closed. And I never stopped walking in the park. You can have me arrested if you want. But I never stopped walking in the park. But now it's legal. And people were walking with no masks on and, you know, people walking in groups with no social distancing. And I'm looking at all of that and thinking to myself, wow, where things might get interesting in a way that we don't want them to get interesting in the near future. You know, there's all of these people going to these protests of, uh, I'm not going to wear, <laughs> people comparing wearing a mask or a scarf to being tortured. People saying you can die from carbon dioxide poisoning from wearing a mask. And trust me, you can't. Doctors, nurses, wear, surgeons wear masks all day and they don't go into carbon dioxide poisoning. So this is, this is like the collective unconscious mind right now is insane. It's actually insane. And that insanity, because there's no outs, is bubbling up for a lot of people into the dream state. You know, it would be a really good idea at this time to track your dreams, to write your dreams down every morning or every night when you wake up in the middle of the night from a bad dream, just to take a few minutes to record it or to write it down to keep track of what's going on down there. You know, the unconscious mind, I've, I think I've mentioned it before in these councils. If I haven't, I'll do it again. And if I have, I'll do it again too. Um, in, the, in the Quechua upper Andean philosophy, they look at reality as being three worlds. And the upper world is where we all want to go. We all want to play with the gods and goddesses and angels and divine beings and mountain spirits and the clouds and the stars and the planets and go shooting through the galaxy on our, you know, unicorn or dragon. This is kind of the stuff that we all really want to do and it's really fun. You know, the middle world is our world where we work, where we play, where we love, where we interrelact, where we feel pain and suffering and loss and do our best to live an impeccable life. And uh, the lower world is, is the world of the unconscious mind, where there's demons and monsters and ghosts and spirits and scary stuff, you know, and the unknown uh, parlance of the ancient, not ancient, but the old map makers. You can always see it's like, here's the Americas and it's this funny looking thing. And then you get Europe and Asia over there, over there, and it's kind of not, not like we would look at Europe and Asia. But in the middle, there's a little drawing that says, there be dragons, middle of the Pacific Ocean, because that was how they dealt with the unknown. And that's what they actually thought the unknown was, there be dragons. So that's the unconscious, that's the lower world, Uchopacha it's called. 
And uh, each one of those worlds has an animal to it. The upper world is the condor. Soaring, condors are so beautiful in flight. Super awkward, they look like funny turkeys on the ground. But in flight, they're so beautiful and they put out their immensely large wings. And by moving one feather, you know, they can turn. Moving another feather, they'll turn back. And moving another feather, they'll catch a, um, an updraft and just soar up into the air very high. And then, you know, looking, always looking at what's happening on the ground. And that's freedom. That's the closest that the Andeans could get to freedom, to the representation of pure freedom to soar to the heights was the condor. In the middle world, our world, it's the jaguar. And the jaguar is a cat. And kind of like I put all cats in the same cat category. You know, if you take a, there's a beautiful video on YouTube that has uh, cats in boxes, cardboard boxes. And it's so funny to see like a tiger or a jaguar or a lion just jumping in a cardboard box like your little house cat will do and playing in the cardboard box. But the characteristic of the cats is they are very, usually, very deliberate in how they move. Like the jaguar, one foot after the other, one foot after the other very deliberate. It knows exactly where it's stepping. It knows exactly what it's doing. And its movements are so graceful, so beautiful, so amazingly connected to the earth. And so this is how to move on the earth, is consciously, with awareness, with consciousness, with intention. And the word impeccable always comes up for me in moving on this earth. You know, I was going to write a very short book once, and the only uh, thing in the book would be the title, and the title would be Everything Matters. You know, because if you're moving in the Jaguar world right, everything you do matters. How you put your shoes on, take your shoes off, how you brush your teeth, how you chop your vegetables how you have a conversation with somebody, how you take a shower, how you drive your car, how you go to work, how you sit at the computer, what your posture is, what your awareness is, how you eat your food. All of these things can be done with refinement and with integrity and with grace. You know, the, the Zen saying is, what do you do before you're enlightened? And I have a whole thing about enlightened, but what do you do before you're enlightened? You chop wood and you carry water. What do you do after you're enlightened? You chop wood and you carry water. That's all there is to do. Chop wood and carry water for us might look like driving to the office and sitting at our desk and doing our work or writing the book or making music or whatever it is, to do it all with consciousness, with awareness. The lower world, the animal is the anaconda, the giant snake of the Amazon. And because the snake, the nature of a snake is that it can go anywhere. You know, if you want to get in an argument with an anaconda about stopping it from going someplace it wants to go, you'll probably lose if it's an adult anaconda. It just goes wherever it wants. And in the underworld, the anaconda is the spirit master of the underworld. And when you look at some of the ayahuasca paintings from the Amazon, you'll see often the spirit of the anaconda in those paintings. And the hummingbird, the kindi, the pika flor, the bird that gets its nourishment from flowers, is considered to be the creature that can travel between all three worlds. It can go to the underworld, middle world, upper world. It's free. 
to fly between all of them. And that gives us the awareness that for us this is possible too. Because how many of us become afraid, terrified, frightened, horrified, shamed, etc. when we experience the underworld, the third world. It's natural. But the hummingbird can go there, not be affected by it, not be wrapped up in it, not be damaged by it. And this is the guidance for us to be able to travel to heaven, to travel to hell, to go to work, all at the same time, sometimes, and be, if not comfortable, at least competent in all those spaces. And so much of what is going on right now has been what people are calling spiritual bypassing. And spiritual bypassing is the practice and desire to go only to the upper world, only to the upper world, to let the middle world go away and to avoid at any cost admitting or experiencing that there's any darkness within. The fear of the underworld is rampant right now. You know, and, and the result of that is that people are incompetent to deal with their own stuff. And the more incompetent a person becomes to deal with their own stuff, the more likely they are to flee to the upper world where the unicorns fart rainbows and the angels play and the spirit beings, the gods and the goddesses will dance with you. Sounds good, but there's a problem. If the underworld is not dealt with, it doesn't go away. If the sickness, remember, we got, we got rotting away two weeks ago as the, or pestilence and plague and rotting as, as the hexagram two weeks ago. And, and so if, if the underworld is not processed, if it's not allowed to rot away or helped, because it said very specifically, help it to rot away. You know, if we don't deal with the unconscious mind, it doesn't go away. It festers. It festers and it gets worse and worse and worse. And now if you're paying attention to what's happening in a lot of communities, this anger of the underworld, this unprocessed stuff of the underworld is bubbling up, you know, turns into stuff like, I love you, love and light, you friggin' asshole, you know, and it's unhealthy. And in, in the long run, what happens when that part of us is not dealt with, the place of the dreams, the place of the fear, the place of the terrors is not dealt with, is not gone through properly, it turns into physical disease. Particularly, in my opinion, digestive disorders and cancer. Because the impression of it, the energetic signature of the underworld is anything but healthy, is anything but kind, is anything but beautiful. So we need to be fearless in the exploration of all parts of ourself. We need to be fearless in the healing of all parts of ourself. Because without that, we become slaves to our fear, slaves to the avoidance patterns that lead us down the path into illness and despair and suffering. Why is it set up like this? I have no idea, but this is what it is. And this is what we get to deal with. This is where we get to explore and heal. And still, the time is beautiful to do this. Still the time is it's always a good time to do it, but still the time is beautiful to do this. And if and when ceremonies start again, it'll be even a better time to explore 
all of that stuff in the world of dreams. Because as, as this person said, it's getting hard for me to differentiate between dream life and waking life. And it's giving me like loads of anxiety. It's bubbling up. What's there is bubbling, the unconscious is bubbling into the conscious mind. The conscious mind is this world. The unconscious mind is the underworld. The upper mind is the superconscious mind, the spiritual mind. So when the unconscious starts to bubble into the conscious, it signifies to me two things. One is there's a whole lot of stuff going on that needs to be processed and healed. And number two, the barrier between the worlds is getting thinner. Not between, you know, the fifth dimension and the, you know, but the worlds inside of ourselves is getting thinner. So what a beautiful time to work on this stuff. So I did another I Ching reading. I was going to, I was going to wait a month to do the next I Ching reading, but things were feeling to me like it's time to go a little deeper into understanding this time right now, understanding what's going on. And for me, the I Ching is an amazing tool in doing this. And so I got as the initial hexagram, small accumulation, small accumulates, gathering of the ghosts. And kind of interesting because here is the gathering of the ghosts again, the underworld, the Ucho Pacha in the Andean philosophy, cosmology, I should say. And I'm going to go through this rapidly. Um, Small accumulates describes your situation in terms of confronting a great variety of things that don't seem to be related. Anybody confused about what's happening right now? This is the confusion. Things that don't seem related are happening. The way to deal with it is to adapt to each thing that crosses your path in order to accumulate something great. Take the long view, gather, herd together, retain and collect all the little things that might seem unimportant. Think of yourself as raising animals, growing crops, or bringing up children. Be flexible and adaptable. Tolerate and nourish things. The rain hasn't come yet but the dense clouds that bring it are rolling in from the western frontier. The successful completion of your efforts is not far away. So beautiful, and again, a, a kind of another, how to say it, another uh, affirmation that everything is all right. You know, everything is happening according to the unfolding of the Tao in the universe. And that's an important, important thing to, to hold to. That's an important thing to hold to, is that things are unfolding exactly as they're unfolding. And the successful people adapt to how things unfold. And raising animals, growing crops, or bringing, it doesn't mean to literally do those things, unless you want to, of course but to be flexible and adaptable. Tolerate and nourish things. You know, this is, this is the time we're in right now and the successful completion is not far away. There were two changing lines. The first one was beautiful. It says, your heart will open the way. Your heart will open the way. You know, not your mind, not your desires, not your fears, not your resistances, not your should I wear a mask or should I not wear a mask. Your heart will open the way. 
your heart will open the way. The procession to the altar to meet the spirit. You've been lost in a cloud of details, but now you see the way once more. Don't hesitate to return. How could this be a mistake? The way is open. Subtly penetrate to the core. Turn conflict into creative tension. The situation is already changing. It's so beautiful. Your heart will open the way. You know, I could, I could actually, really, if I wanted to, throw the I Ching away right now at that, just at that, but I won't, I, I still use it. But just your heart will open the way. And another changing line said, this means you cannot correct it by staying at home. The procession halts, men and women come together at the spring festival, turning to each other. They open the way for new life to enter. Direction, find the heart's empty center. Take things in, be open and provide what's needed. So this is where the situation is turning towards and to me, this is turning towards, and it's spring, it's turning towards the possibility of something really beautiful coming out of all of this. Like these councils, these are really beautiful. And I'm really appreciative that people are still coming to these. You know, it's, it's beautiful to look at this time as what's the opportunity? Where's it going? This is saying it's going towards the spring festival. It's going towards, you know, the, the freedom that will come once we can go out into the world and dance in the world and play in the world and come together in the world. But the direction is find the heart's empty center. We're still, still going to the heart. Find the Heart's Empty Center is a suggestion, direction, demand, whatever that is, for going inside and finding that empty, beautiful peace within. It changes to number 59, which is all of the energies around it. which is very far in the back of the book. We had this had the same one a couple weeks ago, which is dispersing. And basically what dispersing means is that, you know, we, we make some sacrifice and the radiance and the bright omens will be the result to radiate and disperse energy, to distribute, expand, spread and scatter. Something brilliant or striking that dissolves, cleanses and frees. As an oracular, oracular response, it indicates the omen is good, sacrifice is accepted. It's a time to act. It also, in the oldest meaning, is a symbolic death, not a real death, a symbolic death. And, uh, you know, when there's a symbolic death, there's a symbolic rebirth or a real rebirth as well. And so this is, describes your situation in terms of the possibility of eliminating misunderstandings, illusions and obstacles. The way to deal with it is to clear away what is blocking clarity and understanding. And again, it's, it's counseling that very soon it'll be the right time to embark on significant enterprises. And the, two weeks ago, it was like, hang on, you're going to get very busy. You know, you're bored right now. You've been waiting for things to change. Now they're changing but not yet. When they do change, you're going to be very busy. We're all going to be very busy. And this is saying, again, this is coming. 
you know, this is not going to last forever. We will not be housebound forever. Although after, you know, it's funny because there's a 28 day cycle, the lunar cycle, that if you want to change a habit, start on the new moon, continue to the next new moon, that habit will be changed 28 days. You know, if you want to exercise, you don't have to start on the new moon, you can start today, but go through the new moon to the next new moon and it'll be very difficult after that to stop exercising or meditating or eating better food or whatever it is that you want to change. You know, so that is that cycle that we always go through or that the world goes through in these, in these times, all the time, actually. Let the fog lift and the sun shine through. This is pleasing to the spirits. Through it, they will give you success, effective power, and the capacity to bring the situation to maturity. Be like the king who imagines a temple full of images that unite people and connect them with greater forces. This is the right time to embark on a significant enterprise or to enter the stream of life with a purpose. I so love it when I get readings like this that are like so beautiful. And, you know, like I said last time, I was talking about the I Ching. Sometimes you get readings that are like, stop, you're in danger, don't do anything. Nothing you do is going to make any difference. Forget about it. Hide under your bed. doesn't say hide under your bed, but hide under your bed. Pull the covers over your head and wait. You know, this is almost the exact opposite of that. And then we get to the one that's the dream one, uh, as the opportunity that exists within side. For this time, which is the Shadowlands diverging. And, you know, basically that one is that it's time to work on that third world. It's time to work on that unconscious mind. And in a way, I think we're not going to have any choice unless we turn to drugs and alcohol, because this is, this is the calling of the time. This is the energy of the time right now to work on that stuff that's inside. So that was a quick overview of the reading that I, I did a couple days ago for this time and that I think directly relates to the question about dreams is it is time to pay attention. You know, it's been said in the past that God speaks to us through our dreams because we're really too dumb to listen when we're awake, you know. <laughs> but the, the messages that come, the fears that come, the terrors that come, the beauty that comes is all very, very significant. And to see, like last night I had a dream and my favorite dream, I have two favorite dreams. And neither one of them includes sex. But my two favorite dreams are, maybe that's my third favorite dream. My two favorite dreams are uh, flying and running. And last night I was having this amazing dream where I was just running and running and so joyful. And, you know, I've injured my knees a couple times, so I don't run anymore. I walk fast, but it was just so free and liberating to be running and no direction, no goal, just for the pure joy of it. So, you know, for me that when I looked at that, that was a bubble up of like, you're doing okay. You know, you're doing good. You're finding freedom inside. You're finding the freedom that you need to manifest more beauty and love in this world. And, uh, I, that was really neat. I have two birds that are nesting in a potter plant right outside my window here. They just laid eggs. It's very sweet. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to do a poem also uh, and go through the poem a bit, then I'll get to the questions. So I love, as any of you who know me knows, I love Rumi. 
I think Rumi's poetry, even though it goes back, I think, 1,200 years, is really speaking to this time. And that, to me, is the beauty of, of art, is that it speaks universally to all times. And this was, I think, the very first Rumi poem that I ever saw. And it goes, everything, note the word everything. He doesn't mean almost everything. He means everything you see has its roots in the unseen world. In other words, this reality that we live in is a manifestation of the deeper reality of love and consciousness and joy. And that is the basis, the warp and the woof, they'll call it in the Vedas, where the weaving comes together, the warp and the woof is the weaving of the universe. <clears throat> the forms may change, yet the essence remains the same. The forms may change, the forms will change, yet the essence remains the same. Every wonderful sight will vanish. Every sweet word will fade. So that's like heavy duty reality therapy. You know, I love watching videos of rescue dogs. One of the things I really like on YouTube is to see a poor dog that's rescued, that's starving, and you can count its ribs, and the poor thing is so frightened and miserable. And then somebody gives it a home and takes care of it and gives it its proper medicines and food and love and playfulness. And over the course of months, you see this dog turning into an amazing, happy, loving, fun creature. You know, and then the dog dies at some point. Every wonderful sight will vanish. This is, this is the reality, is um, every relationship will end sooner or later. Every acquaintance will leave you sooner or later. You will leave here sooner or later. This is just reality therapy. And it sucks, but it's the way it is. You know, there's nothing we can do about that. But then he says, because Rumi will always have this like change into something else. He says, but do not be disheartened. Don't lose your heart. The source they come from is eternal, growing, branching out, giving new life and joy. Why do you weep? The source is within you. So it's often been said that you know, we could look at the beautiful sunset, we can look at the waterfall, we can look at the forest, we can look into the eyes of the beloved, our beloveds. We can look into the eyes of our child, we can see so much beauty in this world. But the source of that beauty actually and really exists inside. The source of that beauty is actually who you really are, what you really are, even beyond the who. You know, the ancient question, who are you? I always thought should be, what are you? What are you? And if your eyes see beauty, and if your heart feels love, the beauty you see is inside of you. The love you feel is inside of you just being triggered by things on the outside. So every sight will vanish, every word will fade, but the source of that is inside of you. Plunge, plunge into the vast ocean of consciousness. Let the drop of water that is you 
become a hundred mighty seas. But do not think that the drop, that sounds a little bit scary, doesn't it? That the drop of water that is you become a hundred mighty seas. This is the ego disillusion that happens with medicine work and with enough meditation. You know, the individual consciousness merges back into the ocean of consciousness. And, you know, having done sat with thousands of people in ceremony, I know that for some, for many, taking that plunge into the ocean of joy, into the ocean of bliss, into the ocean of nectar is just as scary and just as challenging and just as confronting as dealing with the monsters that bubble up. And it's for some people more so. This is where we get the I'm dying, I don't want to die, please, I don't want to die, no, I don't want to die. And, you know, I'll come up and I'll just say, well, let's explore something. What would happen if you died? Oh. You know, the eyes roll up and the smile comes onto the face. So Rumi is saying, plunge into that ocean of consciousness. In another poem, he says, when the ocean comes to you as a lover, Marry at once, quickly for God's sake. Don't postpone it. Existence has no greater gift. In other words, it's safe. This is all safe. In the great, big, huge picture of existence, it's all safe. And then he says, just to like make things a little bit easier to handle, but do not think that the drop, of, drop alone becomes the ocean. Mm -hmm. The ocean too becomes the drop. So beautiful, you know, we go into the vast ocean of consciousness. We have that opportunity, that precious, immense, there is no greater gift opportunity to let go and merge into what the I Ching calls the stream of life, to what the Vedas call truth, consciousness, and bliss. That opportunity is present in every moment, in every breath. And letting go is not dangerous. Letting go is not dangerous because not only when we let go does that individual drop. In Sufism, the individual soul is called the drop. But that infinite ocean also becomes what the drop is. The ocean too becomes the drop. We can briefly, forever, momentarily, moment by moment, become the drop that holds the ocean. And in another Rumi poem, be the drop that holds the ocean. Only the heart can see it. Only the heart can be it. Only the heart can see. And this is our opportunity. This is Sunday Council. This is medicine work. This is consciousness. This is joy. This is what the I Ching said. This is a time to open the heart. This is a time I want to get the wording right. Your heart will open the way. Not the mind, not the fears, not the resistance, not anything other than your heart will open the way forward from this moment into eternity.
Okay. Thank you. Questions? How about speaking about the Divine Mother in all her forms? You know, I am a highly spiritual atheist, <laughs> which is a funny combination. Um, when I think about Divine Mother, you know, in many traditions, the Divine Mother has a form. Mary, Kuan Yin, Shekinah, um, many different forms. Uh, Mother Nature, Pachamama, all of these things are manifestations of what the energy of Mother is. In Chinese philosophy, there's the Yin and the Yang. Some people say Yang, but it's Yang. So there's the yin and the yang. And the yang is energetic. The yang is the energy, the sun, the heat, the warmth, the energy that propels our breath, the energy that propels our life. And it would be called in Western religion, the Father, God the Father, has no form, has no body, has no dwelling place is everywhere all at once, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, is if there's a zillion universes in a zillion different dimensions, that energy is still there. It's infinite. There's finite infinities and there's infinite infinities and this is an infinite infinity. No place. It can possibly not be, including in you, including in me, including in every single being. Everything that you see has its roots in the unseen world, right? So it's there. Everything you see has its roots in the unseen world. So this infinite energy is manifested by the yin. It's nourished by the yin. It's, it's uh, creates the yin. And the yin is form. The mother, Pachamama, the place of the mother, Mother Earth. It still has within it the energy of the yang. From the center of this planet to the farthest galaxies and the farthest dimensions, that energy is there. And we see the energy of the mother manifested in life. Because to have life, there has to be form. To have life, there must be something to contain that life. And so that mother energy is all the planets, all the stars, all the beings that might exist or might not exist in our galaxy, all the beings that exist in the universe. Everything is that mother energy. I, when I hike, I think of things a lot. I think a lot when I hike. And sometimes I get to not think and just enjoy, especially when going through the beautiful fields of flowers that are around right now. But I, I, the thought came to my mind the other day is, who do the gods and goddesses pray to? You know, and I thought to myself, would Krishna be sitting there going Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare with his mala, you know, would Rama be going Rama, 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 Sita, Rama, 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 you know, would Jesus on the cross say to himself, oh Jesus, please save me? I could go on and on and on. And the answer to that is no, what God to what do the gods pray? That highest being within ourselves. The same 
energy, the same joy that exists in the gods and goddesses, wherever they are, exists in you. So the energy of the mother gives you the form to appreciate this energy inside, this love inside. That's, to me, what, what manifestation is. You know, in, the, in the Chinese cosmology, they say, you know, there was yin and yang energies. Before creation, there was yin and yang. And then that burst into this universe and became the interrelationship of the yin and the yang, the interrelationship of energy and matter created the 10,000 things, which in Chinese means everything. They could say 10 quadrillion to the 10th power things, because there's that many things. But that interrelationship between yin and yang created everything. So when, when I talk about creator in ceremony, I'm not talking about some dude who walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. I'm talking about that energy that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Yeah, that is everywhere at once and inside of each person. That to me is the creator that gave us the mother. That concurrently when creation first happened. If it was a big bang, when that big bang exploded into existence, it was the yin and the yang entering reality. And the mother energy became the 10,000 things. Make sense, Audrey? Thank you. Um, another question here. Everything matters, question mark. I thought it was nothing matters. So <laughs> the, the, one of the characteristics of an intelligent person is to be able to hold two contradictory thoughts in their head at the same time and each one of them can make sense. So yes, nothing matters. Yes, everything matters. And everything matters when I talk about that is in the second world idea is that in the second world, in our world, everything does matter. You know, we learn that when we're kids, look both ways before you cross the street, wash behind your ears. As adults, pay your bills, you know, feed your family, drive safely, put on your seatbelt. So the actions matter, but what really matters is the consciousness behind it. Am I aware when I do these things? Am I unconscious when I do these things? And, you know, I could give everybody here a challenge, and I know from my own life this is true. Have you ever been in an accident when you were perfectly aware of everything around you and in yourself? It doesn't happen. You know, I love to cook. And, uh, you know, so I chop a lot of vegetables because I'm... 80% vegetarian, which means I'm not a vegetarian, but I'm 80% vegetarian. So I chop a lot of vegetables. And I could be there, you know, really in a Zenish state, doing my best to be conscious of every move I make. And I could do that forever and never cut myself. But, you know, I have an upsetting phone conversation. I, uh, something happens in my life, I'm thinking about something too much, I'm chopping vegetables, and the next thing I know, I'm bleeding. So that's the way everything matters. Um, so yeah, they both exist. They both exist. Besides ceremony, what other methods can lead to us to experience ego death, meditation? Ego death question mark meditation question mark. Um, I think the idea of ego death is a psychedelic dream. You know, why would you want your ego to die? The ego needs to be here for us to live. 
You know, I know that as a ceremony leader. I mean, if I didn't have an ego, I could not lead a ceremony. If I did not have an ego, I couldn't get in my car and drive. If I didn't have an ego, I couldn't be talking to you right now. It takes a good bit of ego to sit in front of a microphone and a camera and talk to people. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of self-confidence, which I happen to love doing this. You know, so ego death is, is something that I think is a misnomer. You know, the, the, the idea of opening the heart is so beautiful. The idea of living in the heart, living in joy, living in peace, living in beauty is so beautiful. And as far as, as, far as meditation, you know, a, a man named Prem Rawat, who's been my teacher since I was 18 years old, is giving a online, what he's calling the peace education program. And it's free. I believe it's free. I would highly recommend people join in on that. I don't know what it's going to look like. I have no idea, but it's all about finding peace inside and letting the ego come into a healthy balance with the heart. So I would recommend that. If people want, I can put that in a letter. Uh, I've been reading a book called The Cosmic Serpent about the connection between ayahuasca and DNA. Richard, if you read it, could you comment about the topic in general? Well, you know, DNA is everything that we are. And there's some indication that some shamans, when they take ayahuasca, have seen the DNA strands and the chromosomes and things like that. Uh, I think Narbi got a little bit out there on it all in that idea and uh, a little bit too complex for me. I think it's much simpler. I think it's so simple that it all exists within the context of our next breath or the breath we're breathing right now in ceremony, out of ceremony. Um, there's, understand, there's two kinds of understanding, Rumi said. Good time for a poem. Let me see if I can find it easily. Uh, Oh, Rumi, where are you? Oh, wait, that's Kabir. Won't find Rumi in the Kabir section. Anyway, I can't find it, but the, the uh, I think somebody should ask me how I find all the poems I read in ceremony when I'm high on the medicine. <laughs> Edit that one out of the final copy. Um, I found it. There are two kinds of intelligence. One acquired as a child in school memorizes facts and concepts from books and from what the teacher says, collecting information from the traditional sciences as well as from the new sciences. With such intelligence, you rise in the world. You get ranked ahead of or behind others in regards to your competence in retaining information. You stroll with this intelligence in and out of fields of knowledge, getting always more marks on your preserving tablets. So this is book intelligence. This is what Kabir said you could never, ever get understanding from. It's fun stuff. I'm not saying don't read books. It's fun. But this is that kind of intelligence. And then he said, there's another kind of tablet, one already completed and preserved inside you. 
a spring overflowing its spring box, a freshness in the center of your heart. This other intelligence does not turn yellow or stagnate as paper does. It's fluid and it doesn't move from the outside to the inside through conduits of plumbing and learning. This second knowledge is a fountainhead from within you moving out. And so, you know, when, you, when I read a book, I'm reading it mostly for entertainment and to see if there's anything in there that has value for me. But the truth is that my first desire is to experience the wisdom that created the spark in that author that had them write a book. You know, the whole concept of religions occurs when one person usually has an extraordinary experience of the interconnectivity of life and the infinite beauty of the Creator and that wisdom that could never be put in words. You know, the analogy is he'll go or she'll go, God is here. And then all the followers go, oh, look at that. Forgetting what was being pointed to. And that's what I think about DNA. It's a nice idea. It's interesting. It's not something I think about too much. Because for me, it's not relevant to my, my journey. And that is the end of questions, and we're exactly at the one hour mark. Good stuff. So I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to go on hold for a couple minutes, uh, drink some water get ready and do a sound healing in about five minutes. So go to the bathroom if you need to, get your headsets, headphones, uh, whatever you want to listen to, turn on the big speakers, and we'll have some uh, fun and beauty, share some fun and beauty. I will be back in a moment. So to start, just find a comfortable position for your body for the next 45 minutes or so. And if you have headphones, I highly recommend them. And uh, just take a few deep breaths. Allow yourself to close your eyes and relax. And go to your center. Breathe into your heart. Remember that the counsel for today is from the I Ching was to open the heart, to know the heart. So the music today, I will do my best to aim at the heart and aim at opening the heart. So just really let yourself sink into the heart space. Let yourself really sink into the knowing and the trusting that everything is okay in this moment, in this moment of exactly right now. Everything is okay. Everything is fine. Letting your body melt. Letting your breath deepen. Letting your heart expand. Focusing gently on the space between your eyebrows, focusing very gently on your breath, focusing very gently on the love within.
All day, I think about it. Then at night I say it. Where did I come from? And what am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. My soul is from elsewhere that I am sure of, and I intend to get on, end up there. This drunkenness began in some other tavern. When I get back around to that place, I will be completely sober. I'm like a bird from another continent sitting in this Avery. The day is coming when I fly off. But who is it now in my ear who hears my voice? Who says these words with my mouth? Who looks out of my eyes? What is the soul? I cannot stop asking. If I could taste one sip of an answer, I could break out of this prison for drunks. I didn't come here of my own accord, and I can't really leave that way. Whoever brought me here will have to take me home. This poetry, I never know what I'm going to say. I don't plan it. I'm outside of myself saying it. I get very quiet and rarely speak at all.
You have no idea how hard I've looked for a gift to give you. Nothing seemed right. What is the point of bringing gold to the gold mine? Or water to the ocean? Everything I came up with was like taking spices to the Orient. It's no good giving my heart and my soul because you already have those. So I brought you a mirror. Look at yourself and remember me.
can you find another market like this? Where with your one rose, you can buy hundreds of rose gardens. Where for one seed, get a whole wilderness. For one weak breath, a divine wind. You've been fearful of being absorbed in the ground or drawn up by the air. Now, in this moment, your water bead, let's go. And returns into the ocean where it came from. It no longer has the form it had, but it is still water. The essence is the same. This giving up, this surrendering is not a repentance, it's not a punishment. It is the deepest honoring of yourself. When the ocean comes to you as a lover, marry at once. Quickly, for God's sake, don't postpone it. Existence has no greater gift. No amount of searching will find this. A perfect falcon, for no reason, has landed upon your shoulder and become yours.
I looked <clears throat> upon every cross in every church, yet God was not there. I went to the temples of India and the shrines of China, yet God was not there. I searched the highest mountain peaks in the Himalayas, yet God was not there. I scaled the distant peak of Mount Kaf only to find the empty nest of the phoenix. I visited the Kaaba, but he was not in that tourist site. Amidst the pilgrims, young and old, I read the books and the scriptures, but God's wisdom went beyond all the words. I went to the highest courts in the land, yet nowhere was God found. Then I looked the last place I thought of to look into and within my own heart. And there I found God, for he was nowhere else. Thank <laughs> you. 
your way begins on the other side. Become the sky. Take an axe to all the walls of the prison. Escape. Walk out like someone suddenly born into colors. Do it now. Escape. You're covered with a thick cloud. Slide out the side. Die. And be quiet. Quietness is the surest sign that you've died. Your old life was like a frantic running from silence. The speechless full moon comes out now. So brothers and sisters, now that you've died, you can come back to life. Open your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Return to this world, to your world, to your body, and two o'clock, slightly after two, so that's it for now, and uh, no more questions or comments appeared. So I will say thank you to all of you and blessings, stay healthy, stay safe, stay happy.